Pillars Church. Well, guys, before we start, why don't you turn to the person next to you, tell them hi. We're so happy to see you. If that's your wife, if that's your husband, if that's your family, give them a hug. Tell them we love you. We're so happy that you are here. Tell them today we're going to have a great time rejoicing in the house of the Lord. We're going to dance. We're going to rejoice. We're going to clap our hands just to glorify the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, all right. Now, before we start with the service and the worship, let's just bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you, Jesus, with humble hearts, God. We come to you ready to pour everything at your feet, Jesus. If that's our job, if that's our problem, if that's our anxiety, our stress, we're here ready to just surrender it all to you, God. We, You have all the authority, all the power, Jesus, and we surrender that to you because you, we know that you can take it away. You can give us peace, God. We come to you, Jesus, ready to exalt your name, God, ready to glorify your name, ready to rejoice. Thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this church. We thank you for this message Pastor Ruben has ready for us, Jesus. Now, I just ask that, Holy Spirit, you come. You come and you dwell in this place, God. You come and you dwell in this place. We are a church believing in the movement of the Holy Spirit. So, Holy Spirit, have your way. Lift up your voice, church. Tell the Holy Spirit, have your way, God. Have your way in this church. Have your way in my life. Have your way in my situation. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, God, for this amazing day that you have given us, another day of life, another day of breath, God, and we dedicate it to you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We're expectant of what you are going to do today, God. Bless us. Keep us safe. Keep us hungry for your word, God. And all of this we ask and so much more, and it's your name that we pray, and the church says amen, amen, amen. Let's go ahead and clap our hands. Who came with the heart of gratitude? Let's go. Clap your hands like this. Hey. We came ready to thank God for everything he's done. Who else here came ready to thank God for everything he's done with the show of hands? Come on. Hey. We sing. Wandering into the night. Sing it out. Come on. Wanting a place to Try. And I try 
your name, Jesus. How many can just lift up your hands and say, my God is greater, my God is stronger. No weapon that is formed against me will prosper in the name of Jesus. How many believe that this afternoon? That you have a God that's greater, stronger than my problems, than my circumstances, than my stress, than my work, the troubles that life brings. We serve a God that's stronger. He's greater than all of that. So right now, I encourage you, just surrender it at his feet. Whatever your problem is, whatever you're going through, if that's work, if that's your anxiety, your stress, surrender that right now. I serve a God, a God of, a God of healing, a God of peace. So right now, we're just gonna give a moment for the Holy Spirit to move. Can you do that, Public Church? Can you give the Holy Spirit a move? Let him move in this place. Give him that opportunity. Sometimes we, we ask for the Holy Spirit to come, but we never acknowledge when God is really here. And let me tell you, he is here this afternoon and he's here and he's healing and he's breaking chains. So right now we ask you, Holy Spirit, come move within us, God. Come move within us. We surrender it all to your feet, Jesus. We surrender it all to your feet. We just wanna see your face, God. We just wanna see your face, Jesus. We just wanna see your glory. Oh, we just want to see your glory. Oh, Jesus, I surrender it all to you. Can you just say, I surrender it all to you. Oh, I surrender it all to you. Right now, Pueblo's Church is a church that surrenders it all to your feet, God. We surrender it all to you. And we want to know you more and more every day. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. So we sing.
your voice to the king, call the church, come on. And to the one who reigns, yeah.
you are holy, Jesus. Only you are holy. Let's pray so we can get into the teaching this afternoon. Father God, we praise you, we glorify you, we thank you for the many blessings you've given us. I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity that you give us to once again come to your house of worship. Praise and exalt your holy name. And in this moment, we pray that you would prepare us to receive from your word. I ask that you would give us eyes to see, ears to hear, and a heart to believe and have faith. Give us grace and favor before each other, and above that, give us grace and favor before you. And if there's a spirit, a movement of disturbance that tries to stop the seed, which is your word, from falling on fertile ground, well, I thank you that in Jesus Christ, you have given us power and authority. And to all spirits of disturbance with no fear, together, Pueblo's Church says, the Lord Jesus rebuke you. And we bind them and send them to those places that are lonesome and void that you have prepared. And then, Father, I pray on behalf of myself, I'm just your servant just a vessel as that you would give me the words and the wisdom I need to bring a message that will be a blessing to us all and as I've asked you many times in the past many many times give me grace and favor before your people and above that give me grace and favor before you I ask you for a fresh unction fill us all with your Holy Spirit and help us learn to learn to, learn to depend more and more on your power it is in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray in the name of Jesus amen amen Amen. Let's give the Lord some praise this afternoon. Pueblo well, Church, you may be seated. Everybody's looking good today. Glad you're here. Excited that you're here. Um, hope that uh, uh, um, I want to ask you to open up your Bibles. If you brought your Bibles, uh, I'm going to do my best to get us to three portions of Scripture today. Uh, two portions, really. We're going to be in Malachi chapter 3. And Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament. And then we're going to go to Philippians chapter 4, and we're going to cover a, a very famous um, verse in Philippians chapter 4. And I might touch on a couple other verses, but for sure we're going to be in Malachi 3 and Philippians 4. While you work your way there, I, wa uh, I want you to do me um, a, a favor. And, well, in a minute, I'll ask you for the favor. But I want to take this opportunity to give a quick shout out to everyone that's watching or listening live through Radio Alleluia, Alleluia TV, or through the uh, social media. God bless you. We hope that soon, if you're in the in Houston area, Pasadena area, we hope that soon you'll be able to come and experience the service with us here in live. Uh, we know it'll be a tremendous blessing for your life. Um, I want to thank everyone that's here. I just kind of want to lay a quick um, a roadmap of, of what's going to happen in the next few weeks. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I started teaching on giving, on finances, on money. Um, today, I'm going to sort of conclude that teaching. Um, next week is a big week. Next week is um, Easter Sunday, uh, Resurrection Sunday. And, um, and then after Resurrection Sunday, I'm going to spend some time teaching on, um, I don't know how I'm going to title it yet, but basically I'm going I'm to be teaching on mental health, uh, anxiety, depression, and those type of things. And so you have family, you have loved ones that deal with those issues, bring them. After Easter Sunday, we're going to be working on, actually Easter is going to kind of lead us into that. Um, and then we're going to have Mother's Day. Um, that'll come fast. Um, and then after Mother's Day, the, the Sunday after Mother's Day, we're going to have a, an expert on a mental health come and share a word with us. And so really excited about, about the next few weeks, uh, next month, month and a half, two months. Um, but today I'm going to conclude, I, I know today's Palm Sunday, and a lot of churches are teaching on the triumphant entry of Jesus um, into Jerusalem before the crucifixion. But today I'm going to teach on, um, I want to conclude our teaching because I think it's important um, because it's, it's such a spiritual matter what we're going to touch on this afternoon. And so I want to conclude our, our teaching on finances, on money, on, on what does your money say about you. And, um, and so I want to, uh, uh, before I get into my teaching, I want to uh, re re remind you of, um, I want to repeat sort of a, a formula that I shared with you last week. And if you would put this formula into practice, especially Pueblo's Church have a lot of young people, 
I promise you 10, 15, 20, 25 years from now, 30 years from now, when you're, when you're pushing retirement, uh, when you're getting up there, if you would put this formula into practice, uh, if I'm still around, you're going to come, you're going to give me a hug, and you're going to say, Pastor, thank you uh, for teaching us this, because there is a lot of financial illiteracy amongst our people, all right? Most of our people, uh, uh, the, the, especially the Hispanic community, don't know much about finance, don't know much about investing, don't know much about the, the stock market or how it works. Um, and so um, I'm, I'm giving you a, a golden nugget that it, you, you, you have a lot of homework to do outside of here, but I'm, I'm at least giving you a formula that's going to get you, you know, tw uh, you know, 20 yards ahead, right? You know, just get a first down at least, right? As we're working toward, you know, we're going to get on base, como decía mi papá, con eso si llegamos a base, right? I'm going to get you on third base, you know, so to get ready to get, to make the run. Um, you know, this is a free throw for you, right? I've been trying to use every analogy as possible to let you know that if you would apply this, life's going to be a lot easier for you, okay? And it, it's the 10, 10, 80 rule, all right? 10, your first 10% is your tithe. Learn to give your tithe. You don't want to go at your finances alone. Honor God. Put God first. Honor God with what is first and what is best, all right? That's the first 10. The second 10 is, is learn to invest, right? Learn to invest. You, you, I think you should learn to save, and you should save enough to cover three to six months of your main expenses. But then after that, you don't just keep saving and saving and saving. I mean, the bank pays, you know, 1%. Right now, the bank has certain accounts that pay 5%. Well, Put the money in there, right? Let, let the money at least gain interest, right? So um, invest 10, uh, learn to give your tithe, invest 10, and then live within that 80, all right? Some of you, maybe you invest up to 20%, then live within the 70. And that, that formula, 10, 10, 80, or 10, 20, 70, uh, applies in different ways for different folks. Some of you, you your your uh, financial income is, is at a place where, hey, you know what? I, I didn't have a good layout. Now I've got this layout and I'm going to move forward, right? Some of you, you've got to reanalyze your, uh, your, your whole structure. You might need to make a career move, a career change. Uh, that might require that you go to, you know, San Jacinto Junior College and, and uh, you know, get your license to be a plumber or become a licensed electrician or become a barber. I don't know. Uh, um, some of you it might be just going back to the university and finishing the degree that you started that you never finished and go on be an engineer or lawyer, whatever it is. Um, I don't know what it means in your life. You know, some, some of you, when I say live within your 80%, uh, that might mean that, hey, you know what, for the next six months, you know, uh, put all beans, rice, and a couple of tortillas, right? You know, and, and that's what it is. Um, you know, th that, it, it's, that's what you've got to do. That's what you've got to do, all right? But, but you, you have to learn to, to live within your means. Don't get into debt. If you cannot pay your credit card at the end of the month, then you're using your credit card wrong, all right? I didn't say make a payment for your credit card at the end of the month. I said pay your credit card off at the end of the month, right? Like you should be able to just put it on automatic and every, at the end of the month, my credit card's gonna get paid. If you cannot do that, then you're overspending. You're not living within your means. That might mean that you need to go to Home Depot, buy a little lawnmower and start talking to your neighbors about, hey, primo, 30 bucks, I cut your yard. You know, I don't know what that's gonna mean for you, right? But it's gonna mean different things for different people, right? 10, 10, 80 or 10, 20, 70. Live this out, I promise you. Live this out. This is, this is going to change the direction, financial direction, many of our families. Okay, let's get into the word this afternoon. And let's go to Malachi chapter 3. Oh, wait, 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 wait. before we get into Malachi chapter 3, there was something. All right. Everybody get your cell phones out. All right, take your cell phones out. Okay. Next Sunday is Easter Sunday. Let me tell you, this is the service that's most affected in Easter Sunday because everybody wants to go get dibs at the park, right? The, you know, you know, and, and, but I want to encourage you, come Easter Sunday. You don't come to this service, come to one of the earlier services in, in Spanish. Everybody should have a one in their lives. What's a one? Who's a one in their lives? A one in your life is someone that you love. It might be a family member. It might be a coworker. It might be el primo. It might be el tío. It might be mom, dad. It might be your siblings, whoever it is. Everybody should have someone in their lives that you love, that you want them to know Jesus the way you're learning about Jesus, that you want them to know Jesus the way you know Jesus, that you're willing to stand in the gap for them and pray for them and, and, and have a concern about spiritual, their spiritual life and their spiritual well-being. You have a concern about their salvation, and so you're willing to stand in the gap and pray for them. Um, everybody should have someone like that in our lives, all right? And, um, and we're going to take right now just a minute to pray for that person because Easter's coming up, and that person more than likely is going to be a little bit more open to coming to church with you. Right, because you're gonna tell them, primo, let's go to church, and they're gonna be like, ah. and you're gonna be like, come on, bro, at least on Easter, 
all right? You're going to tell them that. You're going to be like, come on, at least on Easter. And, and you're going to see they're just going to be a little bit more open to coming. And so right now, let, let's pray for, for that person. It might be a family member. It might be a, a good friend. It might be your neighbor. It might be a coworker. But right now, we're going to take time to pray for that person that, that you're concerned, that, that you love them, and that you want them to get to know Jesus, all right? So we're going to take a minute to pray for them. Father God, we praise you and we glorify you. We thank you, Lord, for the many blessings you've given us. We thank you that today you allow us to be here in your house of worship, praising you, worshiping you, and in a few moments we'll be getting into the teaching of the word. But right now, Lord, we want to stand in the gap. We want to lift up in prayer our ones, our friends, our loved ones who don't know you. We want to lift them up in prayer and present them before you. Lord, I ask that you would take away that bind that blinds them, that you will soften their hearts, Lord that you would remove the distractions and, and the disturbances, that when we invite them to church to come Easter Sunday, Resurrection Sunday, that they're going to be more open to saying yes. Father, I pray that you would give us the strength to continually pray for them, that you would help us to do good works in their life, to serve them in a way that will reflect your love for them. And I pray, Lord, that you would send others to also minister to them and deal with them in their lives, Lord. I pray for all of Pueblo's church that right now is praying for their ones. I unite myself with them in prayer. And, and we lift up our loved ones, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen, amen. Now let's give the Lord some praise because we know they're going to come next week. Yeah. Now I'm going to ask you to take out your cell phone. All right, take out your cell phone. And I have a little script right here. You're going to text them. You're going to say, John, I would love for you to join me at church next week on for Easter, all right? If their name is John, their name is not John, don't put John, all right? If, if, if it's Maria, don't put John. I would love, no, no, put Maria. I would love for you to join me at church next week for Easter. You know, uh, 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 mine is Hector, and so I'm going to, I'm going to text Hector, and, you know, Hector, I would love for you to join me at church next week for Easter. So right now, right now, don't, don't, don't take a picture and, and text them later. Right now, what's, if, you don't, if you don't text them right now, we're going to get out of Pueblo's church. You're going to be hungry, and you're going to forget to text them, all right? You're too busy going to the, to the Chinos, you know, the, uh, the buffet, right? Like, no, no. Right now, now text them, take out your cell phone. You were checking Instagram earlier, I saw you. Right now, send them a text and just be like, hey, hey bro, hey, you know, Sammy, I just want you to know that I would love for you to join me and my family at church next week for Easter. So right now, send them that message. And then Thursday, Thursday, I want you to call them, all right? Thursday, call them and be like, hey man, I really would like for you to go with me to church next, you know, this Sunday, Easter Sunday. I know God is going to do something in your life, all right? Say that. I know. We, we believe that. We know that. I know God is going to do something in your life. And I encourage all of you, present yourselves next week, all right? I believe wholeheartedly that, it, uh, that, the, that the message is going to be for you, that you're going to walk out and say that I needed that. That message was for me. Um, okay, now let's go to Malachi chapter 3, all right? Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, so there will be enough food in my temple. If you do, says the Lord of heaven's armies, I will open the windows of heaven for you. I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Try it. Put me to the test. So the Lord is giving us a challenge, and he says, try me in this, right? Put me to the test. In all the Bible... Genesis to Revelations, there's only one way shown on how to open the windows of heaven, right? And God is saying, like, look, if you would do this, I will do this, right? He says, está comprometiendo con nosotros. He's getting into a commitment with us. He's like, if you would do this, if you would make sure that in my house there, there, is, there is food, right? And, and the food that comes out of here is the word. Remember, Jesus says, not only by uh, bread shall man live, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. He's like, if you would bring your tithes, you bring your offerings. He goes, I'll open up my windows of heaven. And then notice he says, I will pour out a blessing so great you won't have enough room to take it in. Now, what is blessing? All right, what does blessing mean? Blessing means divine favor, abundance, prosperity. Okay? Blessing means divine favor. God is like, I will show you divine favor so great you won't even understand it. I'll show you prosperity. I'll show you abundance that, that you, you just won't have enough room for it, right? 
And oftentimes when we read this verse or people share this verse or study this verse, the first thing to pop in the mind, to pop in the brain, is to think money, right? Financials. And, and I believe, and I'll share in a minute, why I believe that, yes, God does bless us, does prosper us, does give us abundance in financial matters, in, 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 in material things. But it's not the only thing. It's not the only way that God blesses us, right? But if we look at the scriptures, last week we spoke about Abraham. Abraham prospered in, in material wealth. He, he, he prospered in servants and in, and in cattle. And then we look at his son Isaac, and Isaac prospered greatly in, in, in whatever he was sowing. He, he reaped greatly. And then we see um, Abraham's grandson, Jacob, and Jacob prospered immensely. Jacob left his hometown, his homeland, with nothing. And then he returned back with, with family and with cattle and, and with so much blessings that he even tried to bless his brother. And his brother was like, no, I don't need it because I've been blessed. I've prospered. King, uh, Queen Esther, she's a queen. Pretty sure she was prospered. Blessed, right? Ruth had nothing. All of a sudden, is blessed and prospered. King David was blessed with great riches. His son Solomon, so rich, so much gold, so much silver, so many things that people from around the world would come just to see what God had brought to Jerusalem. We go to the New Testament, and into the New Testament, one of, the, one of the, the early leaders of the church was a woman by the name of Lydia. And Lydia was a, was a, a, a rich woman. She, she dealt with purple dye. And, and so her and her family, they were well off. Next week, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus. But before the resurrection was the crucifixion of Jesus. That's what happened on what we call Good Friday. On Friday, Jesus was crucified. And when Jesus dies on the cross... It was a rich man by the name of uh, uh, Joseph of Artemis who went to the authorities and said, let me take the body so I can bury him. And it, they buried Jesus in the tomb that belonged to Joseph, who was a rich man. They buried him in a rich man's tomb. And even though we can look throughout the Bible and see so many people blessed, divine favor, prosperous, Abundance, we can see it happen in material wealth. It's not the most important blessing. Right? It's not the main blessing that God has for you. Right? The main blessing that God has for you is that it happens in a conversion. Right? You're converted. The main blessing that God has for you is that God wants to convert you, wants to change you, from being an enemy, from being an outsider, to being a son of God, a daughter of God, right? And that happens because God himself gave. What did God give? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. The main blessing, the biggest blessing that you and your family can acquire is the blessing that we call salvation through Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. <laughs> salvation does not come through a church. Salvation does not come through a pastor or a minister. Salvation does not come through a prophet. Salvation does not come through a religion. Salvation comes through the only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ. Make Him Lord of your life and you shall be saved, all right? So let's go to Philippians chapter 4. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans, 1st, 2nd Corinthians. After 1st and 2nd Corinthians, Galatians. After um, Galatians, um, Ephesians, after Ephesians, Philippians, and, and let's go to Philippians chapter 4. And in Philippians chapter 4, we encounter a very, very famous verse, all right? A very, very famous verse. As a matter of fact, I'm going to mark it twice in my Bible, even though I already had it marked. Right? In Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, all right, 
For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength, right? For I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. In Spanish, todo lo puedo en Cristo que me fortalece, right? Philippians 4.13, right? This verse is so famous, you know, that there are, there are guys who have it tattooed on them, right? John Jones, right, you know, from UFC, he, I think he's got it on his chest, Philippians 4.13. There are guys right now in the gym pumping iron. They're like, I can do all things through Christ. It's true. It's me, right? I can do all things through Christ. It's true. When I was a little kid, we would have a test or something. My mom, Michael, remember, you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Some of you, you might even have it in a, in a frame. You might have it framed in your house. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And, and I believe that all means all, and that's all that all means. Like I, I believe it applies to everything in our lives. But it's good for us to understand the context. Like, why did Paul say these words? Now, remember that when you and I read the Bible, we study the Bible, the Bible wasn't written the way we read it today. It wasn't written in books, and, and you went to the store and bought 66 books. No, they were written in scrolls, and, and you maybe owned one scroll at a time. And it didn't have numbers. It didn't have chapter and verses. Later, someone added the chapters and verses so that we could reach the, 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 the portion quicker, right? You know, it's not like, you know, hey, open up, you know, get your scroll from Philippians. Imagine walking in here with a bucket filled with scrolls, right? You know, or your backpack. And then get the one that says Philippians. You're looking through everything. You find it. And then, okay, we're going to be around there where it says, like, um, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you're like, we're all like, man, we'd never get there. You know, we spend the whole service trying to find that, that one part right there. And so later someone added chapters and verses so that we can just say, let's go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. But to get the context... We're going to back up a few verses, and we're going to go to verse 10, all right, verse 10. Verse 10, Paul says, How I praise the Lord that you are concerned about me again. I know you have always been concerned for me, but you didn't have the chance to, notice the words, they didn't have the chance to do what? Help me, all right? So Paul is writing the Philippians, and he's like, look, I want to, I want to commend you. I want to congratulate you. I want to acknowledge you. I want to praise you because you have always had concern for me. You've always been willing to help. You've always been willing to help. Now, what, what is it that he's talking about when he's saying that, hey, you guys have always been concerned and now you're concerned again, but you hadn't had the opportunity or the chance to help me? What do you think he's talking about? What, what kind of help do you think he needed from them? Take a wild guess. Somebody help me out. What do you think he, he's talking about? Anybody? Guess? He's talking about money. He's like, y'all hadn't had a chance to contribute. Y'all hadn't had a chance to give an offering. Right? Y'all been willing, but y'all hadn't had a chance. Now, let me tell you that if you would take a deep dive into the life of Paul, the vast majority of Paul's ministry was collecting an offering. And a big part of it was that he was collecting money to take to Jerusalem because the brothers in Jerusalem were being persecuted. And so the churches on the outside all wanted to contribute and help to help the church in Jerusalem. Right? And at the same time, Paul, he's sort of a moving missionary, a moving evangelist. So he's like preaching here and establishes a church and puts leaders. Then he goes to another town, another city, another region, and he's just moving and moving and moving and moving. <clears throat> and if today traveling costs, let me tell you that 2,000 years ago, traveling cost. Right? If today food costs, let me tell you that 2,000 years ago, food costs. If today shelter costs 2,000 years ago, Shelter cost. And so he himself, he needed a, a monetary contribution. He needed finances to be able to continue to, to do the work. All right. I'm going to give you a reality that some people, this is, a, this is like a cold water in their face. Right. Salvation is free. Salvation is free. To go to heaven is free. To preach the gospel costs. To preach the gospel costs. Right. Came to church. It's, it's, this is the, all the services, I was hot. This service, they turned off the fan because it's kind of chilly. That AC cost. Right. Imagine your house, what your AC bill costs. Well, I mean, we're on 12 acres. 
Imagine what that light is like here to run the AC. When they turn it on, all the classrooms throughout the whole church received AC at the same time. It's just the way the system works. Your water bill to get water to your house costs. Well, imagine what do you think the water bill is here with everybody on the way in and on the way out, stopping to use the restroom, getting a sip of water. Imagine what the water bill is. And we can go on and on and on and on to, to a lot of different costs. The church, maintenance in a building this old, um, you can imagine every day, there's, there, every day, every day, without exaggeration, there's maintenance that needs to be done. Right? Salvation is free to preach the gospel costs. Right? Salvation is free to preach the gospel costs. And Paul is telling the Philippians, hey, I want to thank you guys because you were concerned about me again. What does that mean? You've been concerned about me and continue to be concerned about me, right? Verse 11, not that I was ever in need, for I've learned to be, how to be content with whatever I have. I like this, not that I was ever in need. You know, the, one of the things, and, and I, I don't really teach, I mean, this is the first time I've taught on teaching. I'm, I'm, <laughs> that didn't make any sense. This is the first time I've taught on teaching. This is, this is the first time I've taught on finances in I don't know how many years. And especially to dedicate several weeks talking about money, giving, finances, tithes, offering. I mean, it's, it's probably, I think the last time I've really spent time, man, maybe like eight years ago, close to 10 years ago. I don't, I don't really like to, because I, I'm just, one of the things I don't like, I don't like when people say, and, and I grew up a PK, and so people tell me, oh man, the pastor, he's stealing all the money. If I'm stealing all the money, how do we pay for all this? Like that doesn't make any sense, right? But I'm going to tell you something, because I have two master's degrees that whether you give or you don't give, tomorrow, when I feel like eating tacos, I'm going to go and eat tacos. Okay. And I don't know, Thursday or Friday, when I need to put gas in my truck, guess what's going to happen? I'm going to put gas in my truck. Right? And if next month, for whatever reason, God is like, Ruben, you're no longer going to be the uh, pastor. You're no longer going to be a part of the church. You know what's going to happen three months from now, six months from now, one year from now? I'm still going to take my family out to eat. Like, like, no me voy morir de hambre. I'm not going to die of hunger. We live in America. I mean, nobody dies of hunger here. There's so many opportunities. So many opportunities. Right? So, so that should not be your hesitation. We need to see here, like these people, they were like, man, we want to give. They were looking for a chance, an opportunity. But notice what Paul says. Paul says, like, yeah, I'm just telling you that I don't, I don't need it. If you don't want to give, it's okay. I'm glad you want to give, but if you don't want to give, if it's okay, because I'm not asking, I'm not ever saying like, hey, I'm in need. Now, pastor's not in need, I'll tell you that much. Definitely I'm not in need, right? Well, I've learned how to be content with whatever I have, verse 12. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I've learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty with plenty or little, verse 13. For I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. That's, what, that's now, you see the application? Right? I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. Let's go back to verse 12. I want to hone in on a word. I want you to keep this word in your mind. I know how to live on almost nothing or with everything. I have, I like how this version says, I have, what's the next word? Learned. Keep that, keep that in your mind, all right? I've learned the secret of living in every situation, all right? Verse 11, let's go back to verse 11. Not that I was ever in need, for I have, again, what's the word? Learned how to be content with whatever I have. Now, don't say amen. Don't, don't say amen at what I'm about to say. I'm about to ask a question. Don't be amen. Don't be like, uh -huh, I know. But, and when I say you, I'm including me, okay? Have you learned to be content with whatever you have? Hold on. Before you say yes, oh, amen, hallelujah, hermano. And then you look at your neighbors like they haven't, but I have. Like, calm down. We have a problem in the church, right? We have a problem in the church. Have you ever gotten like an onion? You get an onion. I'm not an onion. I'm not a fan of onions. I remember my mom, she used to make enchiladas, and, um, and she would have to make enchiladas just for me with no onions. And, and, um, and then she would like try and sneak some in and it ruin my day because I'm expecting enchiladas with no onions and all of a sudden that crunch, ugh. It's got grossed out right now thinking about it, man. 
my friend Marco, good friend of mine, we grew up here at church, and his grandma would do the same thing to him. She'd try and sneak in onions, and he'd say the same thing. He's like, oh, man. It's like, you know what my grandma did? And I'm like, ugh. You know, like that. But anyways, get an onion, and an onion has layers, right? You can, you can peel an onion, and then you can peel it again, and then you can peel it again, and then you can, somebody help me out. Peel, you are paying attention. Then you can peel it again right? Has layers. Let me tell you that you and I, we have layers. Layers in, 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 to us. Right? You, you, know, you know layer one or two of Pastor Ruben Villarreal. Right? 99% of you, you know layers one or two of me. Oh, he, he's so nice. As my wife. She might say no. I'm just kidding. Right? <laughs> oh, he, he's so funny. As my brother, he doesn't think so. Right? You know layers one or two, right? My mom, she, she goes a little deeper. My parents, they go a little deeper, you know, but because I grew up in, under their roof, and so they know, they know like layers 10, 11, and 12, except I'm getting to the point where I've, I've, I'm starting to live more outside of the house than I did under their, 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 their I was going to say under their rule, under their rules, right? You know, that's different. And, uh, and so they, they, they know, you know, my siblings, Especially my sister, that we're like a year apart. So we went to elementary, middle school, high school, college together. My brother and I went to university together. Um, but my sister, like, we, we spent a lot of time together and um, growing up. And so they would go even deeper, like layer 30, 31, 32. Man, they're going in deeper. I have close friends, close friends that know me better than you guys that know me better than my parents, that know me better than my siblings, and they could probably go to a deeper layer, like, oh, I know Reuben in layer 35, 38. Right? My wife, my wife, going on seven years of marriage, man, she's like way deep in there. Like, she, she knows, she knows Ru Pastor Reuben Villada. She don't know Pastor Reuben Villada. She knows Reuben, right? <laughs> like layer 50, 55, 60, like deep down there. I'm going to tell you something. The devil, he knows layer 80, 85. Right? The Lord who searches the hearts of men, he knows the deepest, darkest parts. Right? And oftentimes we come to church and, and most of us, we never self-reflect. We never give the Holy Spirit opportunity to, to, to really work in our lives. And we constantly want to deal on superficial layers. We want to deal with the first two, three, four layers of our lives, you know. And so we read, you know, like, oh, I have learned how to be content with whatever I have. And I ask, have you learned to be content with, oh, yes, amen, pastor. Man, that, that, re that reaction right there tells me you, you're, you're like a, a layer two or layer three person, right? When we're talking about a hundred layers, when people have this attitude that they feel that they're holier than others and they're critical about the way other people worship or spiritual matters or what have you, that tells me that person, man, that person right there, they, they, they may look, layer one, two, three, may look mature, but if we were to go down layer 40, not even that deep, they're immature. Right? They're immature. Right? And, and, and the scriptures Pose as a mirror that, that we can look at. The mirror. You know, my, my sister, she has one of those mirrors. And some, of, some of the ladies here might have one of those mirrors. Like when you look in the mirror, you know, you, you did your makeup and all that. And, and you know, the, the ladies look in the mirror. Bien bonita, right? But then you flip that mirror. mirror. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Y'all flip that mirror, and it's a magnifying mirror. And it do. Misma te quieres ver en el espejo, right? Like, you yourself don't want to see yourself in that mirror. Like, hey, what's going on here, right? That's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the, you know, the, the, the photo you took and then you brushed up with the, with the app, right? The filter, thank you. you use that filter. Quitame 10 pounds, right? Like that. Like, calmate. And uh, some of that raw person. Ooh, there's all those imperfections. That, that's going deep, deep, deep. And if we will go deep, 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 we will find out that we have not learned to be content with whatever we have. Right? That's why, that's why, you know. 
Your cousin posts that they went on vacation and they went to South Padre Island. Mira, la prima went to, to, to Isla de los Padres. It's okay, we're going to go on a cruise to Cancun, right? We have to up her, right? La prima posts that she went on a cruise to Cancun. Oh, pues, well, I mean, that's cool, but we're going to go on a cruise to Hawaii, right? We have to up her. That's why, that's why, like when El Primo got his truck, you know, and it was semi new. He got himself a 2021, nice, man, beautiful truck. And uh, uh, you were like, man, way to go, Primo. Way, way to go, Primo. Like, like there's deep, deep down inside, there's a little piquete that happened, right? There's a little, a little twist, a little pinch on you, you know, where, where you are happy for El Primo, but layer number 50, you ain't happy for El Primo. Deep, deep. I mean, everybody saw you're happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But deep, 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 deep down inside, it was more like, well, I'm going to go, I'm, when I go get mine, I'm not going to get a semi new. I'm going to get a brand new. It was more, man. I'm going to go, I'm going to get it. Like it's 2024. I'm going to go get it. So I'll, I'm going to wait for it. Put the order so I get a 2025, right? You know, it's, it's not even on the lot yet. It's a new body, you know, halo lights. No, hombre, está. Right? You know, like. <laughs> Like, like, you know. And then this service is a lot younger, but I, but I shared like in some of the other services that, you know, sometimes there are, you know, you see, you see your, 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 your nephews and your nieces and they're graduating high school and they're graduating college and they're getting married and then they're starting the family and, and, and yours dropped out in high school and, and you know, you're happy because it's your family, you love them, but at the same time, you know, deep, 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 deep down inside, man, it's just like, they think they're all that because they, they went to college, they think they're all that, right? Okay. See, that, that, that's, what, that's what we're talking about. Have you learned how to be content? Don't answer it layer one or two because we're all going to say yes. But what about layer 50? What about layer 75 where there's still that little boy that was abandoned by his dad and the way it manifests now is that you've got to have two or three of everything. You have to have two trucks. You have to have two cell phones. You have to have four pairs of Jordans, right? Because that makes you feel like a man because there wasn't a man providing for you when you were seven or eight years old. You understand what I'm saying? Like going, going deep. Now, I like this word that we stored in our head. What was the word that we stored in our head? Learned. I like this. Learned, right? Paul is saying, hey, I had to learn this. I wasn't born like this. This isn't my natural tendency. I had to learn. And, and, and learning is a process of failure and do it again. Fail and do it again. Fail and do it again. That's the process of learning. Our, our, our music director, um, Marvin, the guy that, that plays the acoustic guitar over here, him and I, we have a good friend named Adaberto. Adaberto is probably, you know, is one of the best piano players, especially in the, in the, in the Spanish um, Christian community here in Houston. He played at our wedding. Tremendous musician, tremendous music teacher. And so I, I grew up, I, I played saxophone. I played saxophone in junior high, high school, college, university. Played here at the church for many years. Played guitar, led worship for, for a few years. So I, I, I know music theory. I know, um, I can play a little bit by ear, but um, I can read music. So I decided I want to take piano lessons. So I called Alberto, Alberto, will you give me piano lessons? Yeah, so I go, and he teaches me something on the piano, he goes, practice this. I go home and I practice, but it's super easy, because I have all this music knowledge. Super easy, man, I go back, do not play, and he's like, man, that's pretty good. He goes, okay, I want you to practice this this week. He gives me something else. I go home, I practice it, you know, super easy. Come back, and he's like, Ruben, that, that was like really good. Okay, I want you to learn this. So he teaches me a third lesson. I go home, practice, come back, and I kid you not, third lesson, Alberto says these words. He goes, man, he goes, if you keep this up, you'll be one of my best piano students. I'm not trying to brag. Right? Fourth lesson. Teaches me something really complicated. I went home. The next day I practiced. Ten minutes. I was, I was frustrated. Couldn't do it. Two days later, I practiced again. Ten minutes of practice. I was frustrated. I couldn't do it. You know what? Never went back for piano lessons. Never went back. I don't play the piano. 
In Spanish, they say, to toca, right? Toca el piano, toca la guitarra. I told the hermanos, yo toco todo, pero con mi dedo, right? You know, only those who speak Spanish got the joke. But anyways, doesn't translate, sorry. <laughs> Start watching YouTube videos, learn Spanish. Just a fair warning, you do know in heaven, Spanish will be the official language, I'm just saying. <laughs> Think about it. Jesus, Maria, Juan, Pablo, Pedro, Timoteo, Mateo, Marcos, Lucas, they're all going to be there. I'm just, I'm just warning you right now, man. You better pick up on it. Anyways. <laughs> There's a process to learning, and it's a hard process to learn. Sometimes it's so frustrating that we give up. So many people start school and they quit. Oh, well, I couldn't afford it. No, you got frustrated when you took that math class. When you had to take college algebra three times and you failed it the third time, you got frustrated. So now that you couldn't find the money to go, you just, that school's not for me. Well, it's okay, right? Learning is a process. I think of, of, of a baby, when a baby learns to walk, right? What happens with the baby? Before a baby learns to walk, the baby needs to learn to be on its stomach. Then the baby learns to crawl, right? Then the baby learns to stand, and then the baby learns to stand, fall down, stand up again, right? I know most of you were born running. I'm not talking about you guys. I'm talking about us normal people, right? And then the baby learns to take a step, fall, get up, take another step, fall, and then eventually start walking. Right? I'll never forget when we're, uh, uh, when, uh, with Ruth Rose, our third one. People all the time, when's the baby going to walk? When's the baby going to walk? Such a frustrating question. Like, when's the baby going to walk? I don't know. We don't have a contract. Like, hey, two weeks, you better start walking or you're out. Like, I mean, we don't have to, like, I don't know when the baby's going to walk. When's the baby going to walk? When's the baby going to walk? And I remember one time we were some family and someone was like, when's the baby going to walk? And Naeli got frustrated and she's like, when she starts walking, are you going to take care of her? Because we already know she's going to be bad. <laughs> And guess what? Bad to the bone. <laughs> now we're like, how do we tie her down? Is it legal or not? Call the I'm just kidding. Right. Kidding. Don't call, the, don't call a CPA on me. Right? <laughs> CPS, whatever it is. I don't know. <laughs> it's child protective service. CPS. Right. I'll never forget when Rebecca walked. Um, we, were, uh, we were at our friend's, uh, Roli and Naida's house, and um, they have a, a son that's a few months younger than Rebecca, and, um, and Naili was carrying the baby, and um, the baby was crying, and we're all talking and stuff, and the baby's crying, Naili's bouncing, and, and Rebecca grabbed a toy and walked to the baby and gave it to the baby so, th so that the baby could, could stop crying, and we were all like, oh, she's walking, like we all started freaking out, right, scared her, I think she fell, <laughs> and then I had to learn to get back up, right, and I was like, just like her dad, always helping, right, you know, like that. I learned, for I have to learn how to be content with whatever I have, right? Learn the secret of living in every situation. In verse 12, give me verse 12 real, real quick. I love it how he says, I have learned the secret of living in every situation, whether it is with a full stomach or empty, with plenty or little. Let me tell you that if, if I say, have you learned to be content? And your first reaction like, yes, no, you haven't gone through the process. We've got to do it and fail and do it and fail. Sometimes you're going to be jealous of la prima. Sometimes you're going to be bothered by el primo. Sometimes you're going to be jealous that they made that guy general foreman and you've been working there longer. And, and sometimes you're going to be bothered that, you know, that guy got a new truck and, and, and yours is still in the mechanic shop. And, and you're going to be bothered that the primo's kids are graduating university and getting married and doing things the, the right way and yours have taken other ways, you know. But the thing is to learn. Allow the Holy Spirit to teach so that you can learn. It's important. This is important. And, 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 and in the days in which we live, like everything's happening so fast. And in our, our desire or in our efforts, better said, in our efforts of gaining more, we're not learning what we need to learn. Be content. Be content when you have and when you don't have. Be content where you're at. We, we live in America and, and with tremendous opportunity. Most of you, your parents or your grandparents or your great-grandparents came so that you could have a tremendous opportunity. I remember some years ago, uh, 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 Beto, our sound guy, is here, and he might remember this, but we, were, we went to go work at one of our radio uh, sites, and we stopped at a gas station to get something to drink. 
And um, I asked Beto, Beto, you want something? Yeah, yeah. So I went inside to get some waters, and there was a truck parked next to us. And I remember when I came out, I, I, I was walking, you know, toward the, toward the truck, and I could see through the windshield that Beto was, like, staring at the truck next to us. And so when I get in, Beto's looking at the logo on the truck next to us, and he says, do I understand what that says? This was during a recession. It was like 2009, 2010. He goes, do I understand what that sign says? He goes, that company exists to move trees. It was a company that would move your tree. You moved, you loved that pecan tree, they moved that pecan tree for you. Right? He goes, that company exists to move trees? And I looked, and I, and whatever, whatever, tree movers. And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, man, in America, if you don't make money, it's because you don't want to. <laughs> so many opportunities. And I believe that, hey, God has you here for a reason. And he's given you strengths, and he's given you wisdom, and he's given you knowledge, and he's given you skills, and he's given you abilities. And it's okay, it's okay for you to reach out and grasp for more, to be better, to be have a better life for your family, for your kids, um, to, to be a blessing to others, to be able to support ministry in a, in a higher way, to be able to give to missionaries and, and what have you. I, I believe that is, that is true. But notice verse 13 again, it says, for I can do everything through Christ who gives me strength. The real translation says, I can do everything in Christ, all right? Through means in. To get through, you've got to go in. And if you would take the time to begin to read the Bible, you will see this phrase pop up over and over and over again. In Christ, through Christ, in me, through me. You'll see this over and over. Christ in me or me in Christ. Christ in you or you in Christ. You'll see this pop up over and over and over again. In Christ, in Christ. Jesus says it this way. He says, I'm the vine, you're the branch. Abide in me and I in you. He uses the term abide. And then he says, for without me, you can't do anything. Right? Abide in Christ, in Christ. So in our efforts to take a step up, in our efforts to get a little more, not in a greedy way, right? we have to have some safety parameters, some safety rules. And I will share with you that one of the questions that we should be asking ourselves is how do my efforts to gain more affect my family? How do my efforts to gain more affect my family? Right. You're working, and now you're working two jobs, or you're working, and now you work um, uh, overtime or double overtime. And, and this happens, this is a common thing. We have a teenage boy, and the teenage boy is, is running wild. And he's doing opposite. He's rebellious to his parents. He's rebellious to his mother. He's getting in trouble at school. And the dad says these words. The dad said, I don't understand what's wrong with him. I work really hard to give him everything. He has a Nintendo, he has a PlayStation, he has a Xbox, he has a PC for online gaming. I bought him Jordans, I, I give him everything. I don't know what's wrong with him. You give him everything but your time and your attention. Because you're too busy working. And not working for the fundamentals, not working for the basics, not working to have a roof and food and transportation. Well, you're a family of three and you live in a house, a house of five bedrooms? Maybe instead of the Lexus, you need to come down to a Toyota. Maybe instead of that Rolex, you can check the time on your phone. Or issues in marriages where men say these type of words, I don't know what's wrong with my wife. I gave her the house that she wanted. I bought her the car that she wanted. I send her to go see her mom and I give her money so she can help out her family. And she still acts like that. Maybe what she needs is your time and your attention. In our efforts for more, in our efforts to take a step up, we need to ask ourselves this question. How does this affect my relationship with God? 
How does it affect my relationship with God? I'm going I'm to do a public confession right now. All right? I, will, I will confess something publicly, and, and I, I'm ashamed of this, and it, this is one of the struggles in my life. That many times I get so caught up in the business of church that I'm missing out in my relationship with God. Okay? There's a lot of stuff going on here, right? There's a church, there's a school, there's radios, there's, I mean, there's tons of, every day there's work here. We, we've been talking about, hey, we need to set that, you know what, this is the day Pastor Ruben's going to take off. And so I'm like, okay, yeah, Mondays will be my day. And then all of a sudden I'm here Mondays. Okay? And I'm so caught up, so caught up in the business of the church or maybe even in preparation for the sermon that I'm not really taking that time often, right? Moments, periods of my life that I don't take the time that really is necessary for me to just spend time with God, work on my relationship with God. One thing is for me to preach to you because of the knowledge I have of the Bible. Another thing is for me to preach to you because of the revelation that God has given me of the Bible. One thing is for me to share with you because of knowledge I have of Scripture. Another thing is for me to share with you because of the revelation that God has given me of the Scriptures. And to have that revelation, I have to spend time in the Word and in prayer and in praise and in worship and, and myself with the body of Christ. So oftentimes we're out there working and we're working and we're working, then we're not making time to read the Bible. We're not making time to pray. We're not making time to come to church. And I understand, don't get me wrong, I understand the, the area we live in. I understand that out of obligation, sometimes our jobs call us to work overtime or double overtime, especially many of you that work in the refineries. I understand that sometimes your job may call you to work out of town. Right? Uh, I have a friend here who, who's, a, who's a CPA, and when tax season comes around, like I can understand that he goes into a cave and see, does what CPAs do, right? You know, like. But in, in, the, in the big scope, when we, look, when we pull back from the trees to look at the forest, Am I allowing work in my pursuit for a big, nice house and nice cars? I just remember these Houston rappers back in the day. And um, it was a, don't look it up. This is horrible. Pastors even bringing this up. But there was this rap song called, My Mind's Playing Tricks on Me from the Ghetto Boys here in Houston. Don't, don't look this up. If you do, look up radio version. Okay. But uh, one, one of the verses was, I drive big money. I got big cars. Everybody know me. It's like I'm a movie star, right? You know, and um, in our pursuit for big money, big cars, everybody know me. It's like I'm a movie star. Are we ruining our relationship with our kids, our relationship with our spouse, and worse, our relationship with God? Well, as another rapper said another time, I don't know why I'm quoting rappers, but you better check yourself before you wreck yourself, all right? <laughs> Let's close our Bibles and let's bow our heads. <laughs> Will you take a moment to start thanking God that you came to church today? We say, Lord, I thank you. I thank you that I came to church. Father, I thank you that, that I made it. Despite the obstacles, despite the distractions, despite the disturbances, I came. Father, I thank you because I know you spoke to me. I get caught up in the day-to-day. -day. I'm lost in the superficial. But I need to dive deeper. Holy Spirit, welcome to my heart. Holy Spirit, welcome to my heart. Will you welcome the Holy Spirit to your heart? Will you say, Holy Spirit, welcome to my heart? Will you give the Holy Spirit permission to go into the deepest areas of your lives? Holy Spirit, I ask that you would go into the deepest areas of my life. I ask that you would go into every nook and every cranny of my heart, of my soul. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would go to those closets where eight-year-old me swept the mugrero, put the trash. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would move that bed where 12-year-old me hid 
things under the bed that I've maybe I've forgotten about. But in certain times, in certain moments, there's a trigger and they made me act and react in certain ways. Holy Spirit, I need you to heal me from layer one to 100. I'm here at church and everybody thinks I've got it together. That's level three, layer three. But I need you to go deeper, Holy Spirit. Heal my childhood wounds. Heal the abandonment of my childhood. Heal the fears from my childhood. Heal the abuse from my childhood. Erase the scars that I stare at. Take away the memories that haunt me. Heal me, Holy Spirit. You know, the Bible says that in Jesus, you can have a peace that surpasses all understanding. And right now, as God is working in your life, working in your mind and working in your heart, working in your soul, he brings a peace to you, a calmness that surpasses all understanding. Will you receive it? Will you say, Holy Spirit, I receive it. I receive that peace. I receive that healing. Heal me from my childhood traumas. Heal me from, from those experiences that I've pushed away, from the pains that I've pushed deep down in me. Heal me from the pains and the traumas and the abuse and the abandonment that I try to suppress and make me new. Help me learn to be new. You can do all things in Christ who strengthens you. You can do all things in Christ who strengthens you. You can do all things in Christ who strengthens you. In the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Can someone give the Lord some praise this afternoon? Hello, I'm Pastor Ruben, and this is my wife, Nayeli Villarreal. We want to thank you for joining us online, and we hope you were blessed by the worship and the teaching of the Word of God. Also, we want you to know that we would love to meet you in person. Join us Sundays at 12 p.m. live here at Pueblos Church. We would love to connect with you. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram to stay up to date with church events. You will also receive encouragement for your life. And if you haven't done so yet, subscribe to our YouTube channel. There, you will be able to watch our service live as well as watch previous preachings from Pastor Ruben. Will you do us a favor? Comment where you are watching us from. We hope you have a blessed week, and God willing, we'll see you soon.